cloud. There we go. So welcome. This is uh, South Central Brooklyn United for Progress's first candidate uh, endorsement for or endorsement interview for uh, Senate District 21. <gasps> so exciting to say that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm like old school Senate District 17 <laughs> over here. Um, so we would like to, on behalf of um, the executive committee, I'd like you. To, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for your time this afternoon. No, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Wonderful. Um, I'd just like to start out by giving you like five minutes to introduce yourself and uh, well, give a little stump speech. Okay, great, great. So again, I'm State Senator Kevin Parker. I represent the 21st District in Brooklyn, um, which currently is Flatbush and East Flatbush, Midwood, Dittmas Park, Windsor Terrace, and Park Slope. Um, that's going to obviously change in the new lines, um, which will be some of Flatland, some of Canarsie also, but mostly Flatbush and East Flatbush, um, Midwood, Dippins Park, and Kensington. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm running for re-election. I would love your endorsement. More importantly, I would love an opportunity to work more closely with you as the legislative session starts um, to, um, you know, represent the community and make sure that your needs and desires are um, being addressed. Currently in the New York State Senate, I'm the majority whip, um, which means I'm in charge of democratic discipline. Um, as well as the chairman of the Energy and Telecommunications Committee. And I'm running for re-election because uh, there's, there's so much that really needs to be done as we come out of, out of a pandemic that has threatened both our lives and our livelihoods. They, I think that there's um, some much needed um, leadership on the issue of um, economic opportunities, um, particularly in the outer boroughs, um, in regular communities. We have an economy that's moved from Wall Street to Main Street and bringing some um, economic opportunities to those communities I think is critically important. Um, I think there's a lot of work I started in the, in this, in the Senate that um, still needs to be done, um, particularly on the issue of climate change. Um, I'm literally the leader uh, in the state legislature on the issue of climate change, having helped negotiate the CLCPA, being the sponsor of the CCIA, um, the Climate and Community Investment Act. Um, you know, somebody who uh, drafted the law that created the Environmental Justice Review Panel, uh, you know, I can kind of go on and on about those things, but uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that area, as well as broadband deployment. Um, I helped negotiate the $15 an hour, which now is a $30 an hour um, program um, that we have in the state. Um, when I introduced the bill, it was actually a $5. I'm saying $15 an hour, I apologize. It's, um, $15, it was, began as a $15 a month program, and now a $30 a month program. Um, when I introduced it, it was a $5 a month program. Um, but uh, the idea of um, accessible, affordable broadband is really, really critically important. I've been literally getting the leader in the state on the issue of making access to broadband as normal as access to water, heat, and electricity. And so I want to continue um, that work, particularly on a bill that I have now that would create a municipal broadband program here in uh, the city of New York. Um, I've also led on a lot of important issues like police reform. After the murder of George Floyd, the state of New York was the first state in the entire country to pass a comprehensive set of um, police reforms. Um, we passed 10 bills, four of the bills were mine, including the right to record. Um, and again, how important was that in the, in the context of Derek Chauvin case? Um, certain that something that, um, you know, that we're gently pushing back on the mayor on uh, as, as he uh, tells us to back up off his police. We, we still think that people have the right to record police activity and wanna continue to fight for that. Um, I. Uh, authored a bill that created a uh, state camera program, a state police camera program that didn't exist before. So now all state police are wearing um, cameras, you know, because of my legislation. And I also created a uh, legislation that created an office of police misconduct within the context of the state inspector general's office. All of which I think are gonna be important in terms of more accountability, but there's other things that I am pushing, including um, the legislation on qualified immunity is mine, um, a bill that would create um, a residency program for NYPD is my legislation. One that add a bill that creates more teeth for the um, CCRB, the Civil Complaint Review Board, um, as well as one for more legal education for police officers. And so, um, you know, I, I think there's a, a lot of things that we still need to, to do, a lot of work uh, that needs to be done. Uh, you know, right now in the energy committee, I'm really focused on um, how do we lower, lower expenses, how do we make sure that as we come out of this pandemic where people were not able to pay their utility bills, that the, um, the utilities treat them in a fair 
um, in a fair manner and give people time to pay their bills. I'm also looking, you know, I also have legislation that would allow us to use federal dollars to pay off some of the arrears. I believe there's somewhere close to $4 billion worth of arrears. When you look at just, not just water, electric and gas, but also include telephone, cable and internet, which I think should be included in that. Um, and so all of this is, is the reason why I'm running for reelection. Um, I think I have the kind of record that it, it takes to get some of these things done. I'm very proud of what I've done, not just in Albany, but what I've done in the, in the district. And I'm looking forward to working with you as we uh, you know, make our community better. Thank you so much. Um, I I think, I mean, there's only a few of us here. There's a handful. Um, I know we do have some questions. I see Sarah's hand. I, first of all, would like to ask a question since okay. I'm here. Um, you might remember me from such places as the Community Education Council of District 22. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still the chair of that uh, council, uh, appointed by then Borough President Eric Adams. Right. Uh, so I wanted to ask you an education question. I'm also pleased to see that our districts will be more aligned. I'll have a little bit uh, more continuity with, with uh, our electeds, given uh, some of the neighborhoods that you're going to be representing as well. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, on February 8th of this year, Community Education Council District 22 unanimously passed a resolution to support legislation to protect the charter cap. Um, this uh, resolution came from a Senate bill introduced by John Liu, which is uh, Bill 7666, and that amends the education law to provide New York State Board of Regents with final approval authority over all proposed and renewed charter schools. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how, um, if you support this legislation and why or why not? No, I actually support um, lifting the cap. Um, and I and I support lifting the cap because a lot of the, the initial charters in a lot of ways that we have educational inequity. There was a lot of educational inequity in, in how we initially were giving out um, charters. There are a lot of independent um, charter. There's a lot of independent organizations that would, would like to open up charters, particularly in Black and Latino and Asian communities um, that have not essentially had um, that opportunity because of you know, the larger organizations like Success and Uncommon and others that have come in and, and were able to get charters and a lot of smaller organizations were not. And so there's a lot of, you know, um, you know, small black and Latino organizations that I know who have been looking to open up um, charter schools that I think would be um, really good ideas um, in terms of the work that they're doing. I think that, you know, part of the problem we've had with charter schools is that we don't use them in the way that they were intended. Charter schools are supposed to be educational laboratories. Um, not replacements, they're not, they're not school choice, they're not any of those things. They're simply educational laboratories, places in which we are um, trying new and innovative things with our, with our uh, students and finding things that are replicable, things that may be um, scalable, and then that we might be able to generalize to the larger, to the larger system if, if applicable. Um, and so I think that that process still is a valuable one. And so, um, um, that's why I support lifting the cap. Even if we even if we amended the bill to lift the cap just for smaller organizations and we put a cap on, you know, larger chat. So we say success can't get another charter, or uncommon can't get another charter, or you know, some of the larger ones that we feel may be problematic. Um, we really should be looking at some of the smaller, more independent um, organizations and community-based organizations that are looking to open schools and give them opportunities. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah. She's got one or two for you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. How are you? So I um, actually live across the street from Jess. I will be joining your district soon. Okay. Amazing. Not yet. Um, so I have a two part question about healthcare. I work on site in a healthcare facility, which I've um, been doing since before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, the first question is, will you sign our pledge to reaffirm your support for New York Health Act? And if so, would you also be willing to work with us on a New York healthcare event at some point in the future? And the second part of the question is that um, we're still, we still have quite a lot of COVID. Um, where do you stand on 
the COVID mitigation measures um, that are currently being dropped. So to answer your first question first, uh, All right. I, I am a co-sponsor of the New York Health Act and I certainly support it. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't sign pledges, right? Um, and I don't sign pledges generally because oftentimes pledges may be drafted around a piece of legislation in its current form. And I've this one as being an experienced legislator that oftentimes we, we change legislation, especially as we get closer to passing it. And then something that may be in the pledge may be out of sync than what we pass, even though what we pass may be acceptable. So I just, as a rule, just don't, don't sign pledges. But I continue to be a sponsor of the bill. I continue to be a supporter of the bill, although I think that it's very improbable that we'll get it done um, anytime soon, to be quite honest with you. It's very, very expensive, and the state just simply doesn't have the cash to get it done, even when you even when you factor in savings. It's just it's very, very difficult. So one of the things you're going to find about me is I try to be brutally honest. And so I think we can look and find opportunities and try to figure out how we can do it. I think that we may um, start breaking out pieces of it that we think we need. And, and, and trying to see if we can get pieces done a little bit at a time. Um, but I think the New York House Act as it currently stands um, is, is, is very, very difficult. Although I continue to work with Gustavo Rivera, my good friend and my colleague on um, us moving it across the finish line. Um, but certainly I'm willing to meet and discuss and work towards um, you know, getting it done with you or anybody else who's interested in, in, in taking up that, that fight. All right. And, and on, the second, on the second one, um, can you be more specific when you talk about um, mitigation measures? Um, for example, that mask mandates have been dropped statewide and that they've been dropped in our city schools and that we're currently possibly at the start of a brand, of a brand new wave coming right off the Omicron wave. Um, so I guess, just where do you stand on Oh, that? yes. No, I'm, I'm certainly, like, I think that we have, um, like, we kind of go from one, one area to the next too quickly, right? Yes. And, and so I, I certainly, um, certainly am with you in supporting um, things that will make our, our city safer and healthier um, by way of protecting us from COVID. All right, fair enough. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, David, go for it. Sure, thank you. Um, Senator Parker, uh, I appreciate um, you mentioning that, especially in your role as chair of the Energy Committee, um, that um, you know, it's a very important role. Uh, you, know, you mentioned um, you know, keeping uh, prices down to help those who can afford it. Uh, and you also mentioned uh, your environmental work. Um, so my question is uh, on that, which is you know, the New York legislature recently uh, did pass the Climate Community Protection Act, which is, I think, a wonderful bill um, and sets great, um, you know, benchmarks that the state needs to hit to, um, you know, produce, you know, clean and renewable energy. Um, what do you see as what needs to be worked on, you know, in the next year, two years, three years, so that we can meet those, uh, the benchmarks required? By the right. David, thank you very much for that question. Um, you know, in the context of, you know, climate change and protecting our environment, the state of New York has actually passed the most aggressive climate change legislation in the history of the United States, right? There's no municipality, there's no state. The federal government certainly doesn't have anything as aggressive as what we've passed, right? So we, we aim to be at um, net zero in 28 years, right? By 2050, right? Get, you know, which is, and 28 years is a long time and a short time at the same time, right? And so um, we've done, I think, the hard part at creating a standard and essentially with that standard, you know, essentially telling ourselves that we're going to wean ourselves off of um, fossil fuels. The hard part now is getting, it's kind of three parts. The first is generation and in creating enough sustainable generation in the state um, to sustain us. Um, we really took a blow by closing Indian Point kind of without a plan, um, which is not just 20% of the, in, the state's energy, but 20% of the region's energy, right? Um, and so that's, that's significant. And then, um, and so we have to you know, get more, more wind, 
more, more micro hydro. I have a bill that would allow some micro hydro to be built. Um, you know, we have to, you know, get more solar, obviously, more battery storage, all of those things need to, need to happen. Um, the second part is that there's some administrative things that we need to change. And I call it a bureaucratic battleship in a bathtub that we have to turn, right? Because our bureaucratic system is built for fossil fuels, not for sustainable energy. And so we're still, we've made some changes, but we're still working on it. And I think that's one of our biggest, our biggest um, hindrances. One of the bills I'm working on is a piece of legislation that would actually create a, um, a statewide standard for retail solar. So that if I was putting solar panels on a house in Brooklyn and putting them um, on a house in, in, in um, Buffalo or Binghamton or Brookhaven, that the standard that the company would have to use is the same standard statewide, right? And so we're working on things on things like that. And it's those bureaucratic measures that right now are keeping projects um, from going up and providing the kind of energy that we need. We also need to do a lot more with the with the um, utilities around the interconnections. And so even when people are building projects, um, the the utilities are dragging their feet around interconnections and we really need to do a better job and be quicker about getting interconnections on so that energy can be available sooner than later. Um, and so those are essentially right now are the main, um, the main uh, challenges that we have in terms of meeting our, our 2050 goal. All right, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool, and there's one question for you in the chat if you have time. I do. Okay, cool. Um, this is from Gina Anderson. She said, oh, she's uh, her audio and vi video are not working. Uh, she said, thank you for your presentation. She's already in your district, so she's already one of your consist okay. constituents. Um, hey, she wants to know. <laughs> no, we don't, Gina. Um, so, <laughs> interestingly enough, this is about uh, uh, child care in the New York state budget, which yes. C22 also passed a unanimous resolution on probably mm -hmm. the same day as the other one. Uh, so where do you stand on childcare in the budget? Local education advocates feel that is that more is needed than in the existing budget proposals. Yeah. So they're saying three billion is now needed to allow universal child care for families and providers. As a as a father of a four-year-old, um, I'm for I'm, I'm for child care, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm more I'm more um, um, advocate, you know, um, avidly for childcare than I was five years ago. <laughs> and so um, I, something I've been very active on in, in a conversation we've been having, if you saw our, what we call our one house, we actually had universal childcare in the one house. We are now negotiating that. We expect, you know, the budget will be done by the end of the week, right? You know, we have a fiscal year in the state of New York that goes from April 1st to March 31st. And so we hope to get that done um, by the end of the week. And we expect that we will have something significant I'm not sure if we're going to get to, the, to that number, the three billion dollar number, but we're working towards getting it there. Yes, but recognizing that three billion would be like the gold standard. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I think that's all we have. Oh, I do want to say that. Oh, Sarah's got Sarah's on. Yeah. I had. I yeah. I had one more question since we had two seconds. Just um since. Eric Adams is so pro cryptocurrency. We wanted to ask what your thoughts were on it as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's a great question. I'm actually pro crypto and I'm even pro, pro crypto mining in the state of New York, but only if we can do it in a sustainable way. I have a bill that I co sponsor with Anna Kellis, who's an assemblywoman in the state assembly um, from upstate New York, in which we have a, um, which we're asking for a moratorium. Uh, I think we initially began with a three-year moratorium. I think we're thinking about changing it to a two-year moratorium um, on, on new facilities. So it would be prospective um, and essentially saying, don't create any new crypto mining facilities in the state of New York until we can have a proper study done on how you can do it in a sustainable way. One of the unintended consequences of the CLCPA is that it created a market for these old, what we call peaker plants, right? These are old, these are plants that are mostly, you know, gas and oil, some of them are coal, um, that are used during peak season, for, used sometimes an hour a day or two hours a day. Um, and what started happening because we essentially, essentially banned them, you know, or made their, their value significantly less in the context of the CLCPA, crypto mining operations came and started buying them 
and started running their crypto mining operations out of these plants. And so they're taking plants that were meant to be you, you know, run maybe seven to eight hours a day, and they started running them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and then again, their gas, their oil, some of them are coal. And so they certainly are not providing the kind of sustainable energy and they're using a significant amount of energy. And some of them that are up near the Great Lakes are even taking the water they use for cooling and putting it back into these lakes at very high temperatures, killing um, a lot of the aquatic life there. Um, certainly that is not what we want for our state. Uh, and even though I'm again, pro crypto, and I think it's something that we should be involved in, um, we can't do it at the expense of our environment or, or clean um, usable water. And so until we can figure out how to do it in a, in a mass way that's sustainable, um, I'm calling on a moratorium and a study uh, to see how we do it in a sustainable way. Thank you. So All right, much. Uh, fair enough. Thank you for answering. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Thanks so much. I think that's that's all we have for you for now. Um, I do have to I do have to call you out a little bit. Um, we did okay. we gave you a questionnaire, a written questionnaire, uh -huh. and we need that back ASAP. Oh, you didn't get it back. I apologize. No. Right after this call is over, I will reach out to my team and make sure that it gets returned to you post haste. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, preferably within the next three hours. But. Just, just Yes, I will make sure that happens. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I don't want to keep you any longer. You know, I can ask you like. I, I am. Questions. Look, I, I I have as much time as you have. So with, <laughs> with if you have more questions, ask them. I'm happy to you know either have another Zoom meeting with you. Um, you know, whether you endorse me or not, I you know I still represent the community. I love to talk about issues. So if you want to do a Zoom meeting, or if you want to do something in person, let me know. I'm happy yeah, to sure. talk to you and the community about whatever issues are, are going on. Great. Well, we appreciate that. Totally. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, right. Thanks for being here. And we will, we are having our endorsement meeting. I guess our vote is tomorrow. If I'm wrong, David would say something, but it's, I'm not wrong. It's tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and so we will. Yes, like, tomorrow, tomorrow late afternoon. We'll so right. we should know by, we should know by like, how long do we keep it open? 72 hours? Uh, 48 hours. So we will, we'll probably be announcing it on Wednesday of next week. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful right. afternoon. I enjoy the weekend. Thanks.